Hello, my name's Russ and this is a follow-up second video that I've made to show, or I'm making to show how I use crow braking on uh, F3A biplanes. Uh, the crow braking designs to slow the aircraft down on the downlines. Um, I made a video earlier in the year using a miswind biplane. Uh, the reason why I'm using the small Citroen today is because it actually has a little bit more crow braking than the Miss Wind. Uh, Miss Wind has about 11 degrees and this has about 16 degrees. Uh, the reasons why they're different is that the Miss Wind is, has a slightly larger wingspan than this. Uh, this is just 1380. Um, and the ailerons on the Miss Wind are also slightly larger. They, they come slightly longer and they're slightly deeper as well. So um, I found that I wanted 11 degrees of braking on that. Uh, just to briefly show you uh, how it works, um, this is the brakes fully deployed, um, but actually they operate proportionally using, a, uh, using the throttle stick. Um, so the reason why I use 11 degrees on the uh, Miss Wind and I'm using 16 degrees on the Citroen is because it's tied in with a very simple rudimentary ESC brake. I use a, a Turnigy Plus Plush 32 ESC which breaks at 0, 25, 50, 75 and 100. Um, and I've set them both for 25 and then adjusted the crow braking. What that means is that the model will uh, descend fairly constantly on a vertical downlines at zero throttle. When I was using 50%, um, it was actually quite hard to set that up because there was much less braking, uh, crow braking needed um, and so it was a little bit more inconsistent. Uh, so 25% ESC braking and on this model 16 degrees of crow braking. Uh, as I say, it's set up proportionally so that uh, at the top half of the throttle there is no braking at all, normal flying. When I get down to uh, just below 50% uh, because I've got a throttle curve on this, uh, as we start to reduce the throttle then the crow brakes start to deploy until they're deployed fully at zero throttle. I mean obviously when you're doing uh, 45 degree downlines with partial throttle then the crow brakes are only slightly deployed which also gives a nice smooth uh, descent on the 45 degree lines as well as the vertical lines. So it's done proportionally and that's done simply with a program mix of throttle to each individual aileron. The, uh, the ailerons, one of the things I found out, which wasn't on the initial video, um, was that initially I hadn't offset the, uh, the servos at all. What you can see now is that the servos are offset. They're actually all offset just around, you hopefully you can see that, around 18 degrees. Um, so therefore, when the brakes are fully deployed, it's, it's a, a system where you get the same roll rate with the brakes fully deployed or the brakes not deployed. Um, and to do that, I had to offset the servos, which I hadn't done to start with. And of course, when the crow braking when the crow braking was deployed from a 90 degree position, then there wasn't much control movement left and I was getting less aileron uh, input and therefore the roll rates going down were much slower than the roll rates going up. So by offsetting, we have movement of the aileron there and the same amount there. And because you've got four ailerons, it works quite nicely. One of the other problems I had to start with was, was actually getting all the servos set at exactly 18 degrees because of the way servos are with 24, 25 uh, tooth splines. So I use high-tech servos, and I'm not trying to plug high-tech, but I use one of their HFP30s, which is a programmer. You can probably do the same thing on the transmitter anyway, but this programmer allows you to fine-tune the center of the uh, servo position. So therefore, I could set them all up exactly at 18 degrees. I also found that um, on the downlines, with the crow braking deployed more than when they weren't deployed, I was just getting a little bit of pull into the canopy. 
Um, it, I'm not exactly sure why that is, possibly because the top wing is slightly further ahead of the bottom wing, I'm not exactly sure, but with the brakes deployed it was put in very slightly to the canopy. So, quite simple, um, I used the uh, proportional offset to um, make sure that the brakes don't start deploying until uh, roughly 45% throttle, and then I use an air brake function on how much they deploy, and I just reduce the, um, uh, the bottom wing deployment slightly, and now the vertical lines are absolutely vertical. Unfortunately, the 45 degree down lines are uh, stayed the same at 45 degrees, um, which is nice when you then have to roll or do whatever. So, um, so with the programming uh, mode and with the uh, um, programming on the transmitter, it was nice and easy to get a nice smooth deployment. Initially, uh, I said on my previous video that I would be turning them on and off in flight. That's not really required. Um, I uh, start, start with them off. When I go to take off, I activate the, uh, the brakes. At that stage, the, um, the throttle uh, will be uh, zero. So obviously activating the brakes shows that they are working. And it reminds me that I've got them activated. Uh, I then fly the whole of the schedule with the brakes active brackets so they de deploy as and when they're needed. And then all I do is I uh, just turn them off for landing. That's because I'm fairly active on the throttle uh, during the approach. It's, it's a small model, um, it does bounce around a little bit in the wind. Um, and so uh, I tend to be quite active on the throttle and I don't really want the brakes popping in and out and in and out and in and out. Um, I have landed it quite a few times uh, with the brakes deployed, partly because I've either forgotten to turn them away, um, turn them off, um, and also sometimes if it's windy because I'm using quite a lot of throttle anyway, in which case there's, uh, there's no real need to, uh, to turn them off. Um, but uh, it, it flies fine. Um, but of course you do have that sort of slightly more unbalanced uh, feeling with the brakes deploying and not deploying. So on for all of the manoeuvres, off for landing. I do leave them on for spinning. Um, it spins very nicely with the brakes deployed and of course when you come out of the spin it's nice that the brakes are deployed and it keeps the downline nice and smooth and, uh, and I get a nice straight downline on that. So, uh, so that's uh, how, how it's done. Obviously with the brakes deployed um, we still have uh, all the uh, all the movement that we, we require either way, and I have enough movement um, with uh, what's left on the ailerons, which is uh, roughly about 55% uh, of the travel. 45% is used by the crow brake uh, for snaps. So uh, when I put the, uh, the mode into snaps, then uh, I use actually about uh, 16, 17 degrees of aileron, whereas I'm using only about seven degrees of aileron uh, in normal flight. So there's plenty of uh, control, control left for snaps as well. Uh, so hopefully uh, that explains a little bit more on how I set the, the crow breaking up. As I said, they are very effective. They work very well, they're very simple to use. You turn them on to start with and you can leave them on the uh, entire flight if you wish to. Um, and it definitely helps the model on the downlines without obviously uh, investing uh, too many hundreds of pounds in a very advanced speed controller. Uh, so that's why I've done it and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Thank you.